In Canada, a young boy named James is sick in bed. Another boy named Victor keeps company with the young boy. James' father comes in to check on him but he has to leave the room soon, as the establishment's groundskeeper is making a mess outside. The groundskeeper kills James' father, and the boy cries above his dead body. James is infuriated, and that makes him pull his claws out of his fists. He is a mutant. The young boy charges at the groundskeeper, and pins him against the wall by impaling him with his claws. As the groundskeeper dies, he tells James that he is his biological father. James tries to run away, but Victor, who is proven to be his half-brother, runs after him. He tells James that they need to run away but stick together, taking care of one another. As the years go by, the two brothers stick together. They join the Civil War, and they fight side by side. Then, they join World War I and World War II. They are impossible to kill. They are the greatest asset the army has. However, the war takes a toll on them, and Victor becomes increasingly more violent. When the brothers join the Vietnam War, Victor grabs a woman in order to use her, but his superior spots him. Infuriated, Victor kills his superior, and he is arrested by the army along with his brother. The two brothers are sentenced to death. A bunch of soldiers carry out their execution, but the two brothers survive. Nothing can kill them. When they wake up later on, Major Stryker meets up with them. He wants to recruit them to his special team. Their other choice is to rot in jail. Soon, the brothers join the team and meet the rest of its members. All of them are mutants, and it is now shown that Victor has abilities similar to James. His claws can elongate, and they are very sharp. As the team prepares for their first mission, they also meet Wade, who looks a lot like Deadpool. He is a swordsman and considered a lethal soldier. He has some brutal combination of skills. When the team lands in Nigeria, another mutant maverick eliminates all the soldiers with his guns. He is so good at this that he can hit his target from miles away. However, a soldier survives this onslaught. He was hiding inside the war tank. He tries to kill all the invaders with a cannon attack. But another team member Fred uses his hand to block the barrel, which results in a tank explosion. When they enter the building, the boss sees them through cameras and cuts the power, so they can't able to reach to his room. But mutant Bradley uses his power to get the power back. The security guards get ready. As soon as the elevator opens, Wade shows his sword skills and even cuts the bullet in half. He single-handedly eliminates all of them. The boss tries to get his gun, but John uses his teleportation power to stop him. However, the boss of the rivals believes that they came to steal his diamonds, but Stryker is interested in a rock. The man has no idea, and only believes it is a plain rock. As Stryker asks around the village, he is told by a man that the rock came from the sky. Stryker tells Victor to kill everyone, and the man is happy to do so. However, James stops him in order to remind him that this is not the reason why they joined this team. They are not killers. James decides to leave the team, but Victor says they can't just let him walk away. James grabs his dog tags and rips them out of his throat, which means he is no longer a member of this team. Then, he just walks away as his brother calls his name. Six years later, James lives in a quiet place with his girlfriend, Kayla. Elsewhere, another member of Team X, Bradley, is working at a funfair. He is using his telekinesis skills to make some money. When he goes back home, Victor bangs on his door and wants to have a talk with this mutant. Victor has a hostile attitude, while Bradley reassures him that he did not talk to anyone. As they discuss, Victor reveals that Wade is dead. Then, he plainly kills Bradley as the lights around the funfair go off. The next morning, Stryker visits James at his workplace and claims he has a proposition for him. Stryker informs him that Bradley and Wade are dead. He believes that somebody is going after Team X and wants James to go after him. However, James wants nothing to do with it. But Trouble can't stay away from James, whom everybody knows as Logan now. The next morning, Logan finds a dead bear in the forest while Victor approaches Kayla. Logan realizes that and rushes to the car. But as it appears, it is too late. Kayla is not in her car. A few moments later, Logan finds her dead. In tremendous pain, he screams at the top of his lungs. That night, Victor waits for Logan in a bar, and his brother makes sure to appear. As they get ready to fight, Logan asks his brother why he killed Kayla. Victor complains that Logan never calls and never writes to him, so he wanted to get his attention. As the fight breaks out, Logan loses the first round, but gets back up. Unfortunately, Victor is stronger than him and defeats him. As he picks his brother up, 
He asks him if Kayla was worth his time as compared to the time they could have spent together. Logan tells his brother that he is not like him, but Victor has another opinion. Victor stomps his claws and breaks them as the police sirens are heard approaching. Logan wakes up in a hospital. He grabs the doctor by his throat, asking him about Victor. The doctor has no idea what he is talking about, but Stryker appears out of nowhere to tell him that he can help him out. Logan is mad at him as well but Stryker claims that Victor is not working for him. He wants Logan to help him stop Victor because he is getting out of control. In addition, Stryker claims he has something that he can use to defeat Victor. Logan agrees to work with Stryker, but he only wants to know where Victor is. Then, Stryker should get out of his way. Stryker takes Logan to a lab where he is going to infuse him with adamantium, a substance that will make him indestructible. Before they begin, Logan asks to have a new dog tag created with the word Wolverine carved on it, something that Kayla had come up with. As the operation begins, Logan starts experiencing excruciating pain as various memories flash in his mind. For a moment, his heartbeat stops, but he gradually comes back to life. All this time Stryker refers to him as Weapon X, which might be kind of weird, since he already has a name. One of Stryker's trusted mutants, Zero, asks what they are going to do with Logan. Stryker replies that they will use his DNA to create Eleven, but that is not all. Stryker orders his people to erase Logan's memory. Wolverine hears that and is able to jump out of the infusion chamber. Then, he escapes the base. Stryker shows his true face when he asks Zero to hunt him down and kill him. Logan runs to a farm and enters a random barn as an old couple returns to their house. The old man enters the barn and finds him without any clothes. After the old man makes sure that he is not a drug addict, he invites him to the house. Wolverine takes some time to see his new claws, which are now made by adamantium. They are far more sharp and strong than his bone claws. In fact, they are so sharp that he cuts the sink in half. As Logan spends more time around the barn, the old man spits some wisdom when he tells him that he looks like he is looking for blood. The thing is, the people who go out looking for blood usually find it. Everybody has a choice. However, Logan believes his choice got taken from him. As the old lady joins them in the barn, she is shot and killed by Zero. Then the old man is shot as well, and he dies in the arms of Logan. Stryker gives the order, and a helicopter fires missiles at the barn. Even though the explosion is huge, Logan is able to survive, and drives away with a motorcycle that belonged to the old man. The helicopter goes after him, as a couple of vehicles also appear out of nowhere. Stryker really wants Wolverine dead. Logan's claws are so sharp that he decides to go face to face against one of the vehicles. Using his claws, he cuts the vehicle in half. Then, he decides to do the same exact thing with the helicopter. He jumps on it and cuts its wings with ease. When the helicopter is down, Stryker communicates with Zero to ask him if Logan is dead. Logan grabs the headset and tells Stryker that he is coming to get him after he kills Victor. While walking away, Logan lights a fire and the helicopter blows up, killing Zero. Back in the lab, Stryker knows that Wolverine will be hard to kill. So he tells his people that they need to make adamantium bullets. This way maybe they can stop him. Later, Logan meets up with some of his old friends from Team X. One of them, John, tells him that they are all full of guilt. Because at some point they realized Stryker was making them hunt down other mutants. Then, Logan meets another old friend, Fred, who has become obese. Because he developed an eating disorder due to his guilt. Logan asks him about something he heard Stryker mention. A place called the island. Fred is not in the mood for a talk and mishears Logan, thinking that he just called him a blob. That gets them in the ring. They make a deal. If Logan defeats him, Fred will tell him everything he knows. Logan knocks him out, and Fred makes a hard revelation when he wakes back up. Victor is working with Stryker, and he gets the mutants for him. When he catches them, he takes them to the place they call Island. As the rumor has it, Stryker experiments on them. Nobody knows where the island is exactly, but there is a mutant called Remy who escaped it, and maybe he can tell Logan about its location. Elsewhere in a high school, a student called Scott Summers is in detention. Victor appears out of nowhere and knocks him out. Stryker appears after him and orders Victor to pack the young man up for the island. Soon, Logan and John proceed to meet Remy. John keeps an eye around the casino, while Logan has a talk with Remy. Victor appears to attack John, who wants to have this fight, and kills Victor. Even though John teleports here and there, Victor is able to get him. He tells John that he has always had a disadvantage, 
he is very predictable. At the same time, Remy attacks Logan and sends him flying outside the casino because he does not want to be taken back to the island, as Logan suggested. Outside, Logan sees Victor, and the two of them start fighting. This time Wolverine is stronger, but they are interrupted by Remy, who attacks and ruins the place. Victor finds an opportunity and escapes, as Remy gets in Logan's way. The two of them start fighting, but Logan eventually pins him down. He explains that he just needs Remy to take him to the island, because he wants to kill all the people who harmed him. Soon, Remy takes Logan to the island, and the latter starts searching for Stryker's lab. At the same time, Stryker's scientists are working on creating Weapon 11, this mutant is going to be named Deadpool. Logan finds the lab, but Stryker has a surprise for him. Kayla appears, and Stryker explains that she has been in the trick all along. Kayla is a mutant whose skill is hypnosis, but she can only use it when she touches somebody. Stryker needed to find a way to keep an eye on him, and she had Kayla seduce him. Logan walks away, while Kayla reminds Stryker that she did everything he asked her to do. She asks to get her sister back, but Stryker wants some more time to analyze her, because her mutation is very unique. Victor appears as well, and he is angry at Stryker for allowing Logan to walk away. As it appears, Victor has a deal with Stryker, but the Major tells him that he is not going to survive the operation if they infuse him with adamantium. Victor grabs Kayla, and Logan hears her screams, which makes him come back. As he fights with Victor, Kayla appears in order to tell him that she did not trick him, what they had was real for her the same way it was real for Logan. Kayla needs his help, because Stryker is keeping many mutant prisoners, one of them being her sister. Logan rushes to free the prisoners, while Stryker orders his people to activate Deadpool. Logan and Kayla take the prisoner toward the plant's exit, but Deadpool appears and blocks their way. Logan knows this mutant is strong, so he tells Kayla to get the young mutants and find another exit. As everybody runs away, Logan asks Deadpool if he is Wade, and prompts him to not attack. However, Deadpool is controlled by Stryker and is ordered to engage. While the two of them start fighting, the rest of the mutants are attacked by a dozen soldiers. Despite this, the young mutants work together, and defeat the soldiers. Then, Kayla urges them to run, as she tells her sister that she has to stay behind and help Logan. In the meantime, Logan jumps on top of a tall grid tower, but he is surprised to see that Deadpool can teleport. The Wolverine is almost defeated, but Victor appears out of nowhere to help him. He says that he is the only person who is allowed to kill his brother. The two of them have to fight Deadpool together until they are able to get him. In the end, Logan sneaks up on Deadpool and removes his head from his shoulders. As Deadpool's head spins around shooting laser beams, the grid tower is cut in half and collapses. Logan with Victor are both alive, but Logan tells his brother that this changes nothing between the two of them. On the other hand, Victor says that they will always be connected to each other. They are brothers, and they are obligated to look after one another. Meanwhile, Stryker is loading a gun with adamantium bullets. After Victor leaves, Logan hears Kayla's voice calling him. He runs near her. He takes Kayla in his arms and walks away with her. But Stryker appears behind them and shoots at them. Logan falls to the ground, but Stryker knows that these bullets are not enough to kill him. However, he wants to deliver the maximum damage he can. He knows that if he shoots Logan in his head, the Wolverine will lose his memories and will never be able to reclaim them. After shooting his head twice, Stryker approaches Kayla. She touches his leg and makes him turn the gun toward his own head. Finally, she orders him to walk until his feet bleed and then keep walking. Meanwhile, the young mutants are guided outside, where they are met by Charles Xavier and taken to safety. When Logan wakes up, he is approached by Remy, but he does not remember him. Moments before they leave the island, Logan finds Kayla lying dead on the ground. Remy asks him if he knows who she is, but Logan replies negatively. A few years later, during the war, Logan is imprisoned in a Japanese village near Nagasaki. The Japanese receive a warning that a nuclear bomb is coming their way. They release all of the prisoners so they can run. One of the Japanese soldiers, Ichiro Yashida, opens the hatch where Logan is imprisoned and tells him to run. On the other hand, Logan believes that there is not enough time to run. Ichiro was about to end himself along with the rest of the officers when the bomb is dropped. But right then, Logan grabs him and brings him back into the hatch. He uses his body as a shield to protect Ichiro. 
After the huge explosion, Logan is burned, but his body recovers. Ichiro is scared, but Logan does not allow him to climb back up because it is not safe yet. In the present day, Logan dreams of his ex-crush, Jean. Logan had to kill her in order to save the world. In his dream, he tells Jean that he vowed to never hurt anyone ever again. However, Jean tells him that it is too late now, and Logan sees his claws deep in her body. When he wakes up, it is apparent that the Wolverine is now living like an animal, sleeping in the mountain. Before taking a walk in town, he walks by a bear, but he is not afraid of it. The bear also does not attack him, as if it recognizes him as a friend. That same night, Logan hears some weird noises, and decides to walk through the forest in order to investigate. It sounds like humans are screaming. As he wanders through the forest, he finds the bear lying on the ground. He tries to calm it down, but the bear has been hurt, and it is aggressive. Logan understands what the bear wants from him, like it is speaking to him, so he does it a favor, and puts it out of its misery. Right next, Logan walks back into town to find out what happened. As it appears, a bunch of hunters were responsible for the bear's fatal injury. Logan finds the men inside a bar, and attacks one of them. As the fight is about to start, a tiny girl named Yukio appears out of nowhere, and advises Logan to not bother with these men, because they are going to die soon anyway. She outlines the specific events of their deaths, as if she is able to foresee the future. After teaching them a quick lesson, she takes Logan with her, and drives away with him. Yukio tells him that her master wanted her to find Logan, and return some weapons that belong to him. When Logan asks who is she talking about, Yukio replies that her master is Ichiro Yashida, the man Logan saved so many years ago in Nagasaki. Ichiro was about to die, and he wants to see Logan one last time in Tokyo to thank him for saving his life back then. Logan is not in the mood to visit Tokyo, but Yukio was able to convince him. During their trip to Japan, Yukio tells Logan that Ichiro Yashida managed to build a huge corporation. Logan is not impressed easily, but Yukio tells him that she owes her life to Ichiro, so he should be more respectful toward him. While he waits, Logan sees two men dressed as samurais. When Yukio joins him, she reveals to him that one of them is Shinjin, Ichiro's son. Yukio takes Logan near Ichiro's chamber, where he sees Mariko for the first time. Mariko was Ichiro's granddaughter, and Logan seems to be really fond of her. Before he can see Ichiro, Yukio takes him to clean himself up. Logan is not in the mood for a shave and a haircut, but Yukio pulls her knife out, showing him that she is very serious. Soon, Logan finds his old self, and is taken to see Ichiro. When the old man sees him, he comments that Logan looks exactly like he used to look back in the day. Ichiro asks Dr. Green to leave him with Logan for a few moments, but the professor is very strict, only allowing them to have five minutes. As it appears, Ichiro does not just want to thank Logan but he also has a proposition for him. Ichiro believes that a man loses purpose if he leaves forever. He thinks that he will do Logan a favor if he helps him lose his immortality. Logan believes that his condition can't be undone, but Ichiro explains that he can take his immortality if Logan transfers it to somebody else. Ichiro is not ready to die, but Logan is. However, the old man has read the situation a bit wrongly. Logan tells him that he can't give him what he wants, and walks away. Right next, Logan watches Mariko fighting with Shinjin. Their confrontation ends with Shinjin slapping her. Mariko tries to commit the unthinkable, but Logan sees her and stops her at the last minute. In the meantime, Shinjin walks into the chamber to have a talk with his father. The tension between the two of them is high, and Ichiro starts telling him that he tested him over the last few years in order to understand if he is the right person to be in charge of the company. Although Ichiro gave him more power, he realized that was the wrong thing to do, and Shinjin is not the right person to continue the company's legacy. In the meantime, Logan has yet another weird dream. Jean kisses him in his dream, but then she turns into Dr. Green. The dream feels quite real, but there is nobody inside the room when he wakes up. On top of that, Logan is informed by Yukio that Ichiro died. The next day, everybody attends Ichiro's funeral, but Shinjin is a bit hostile toward Logan. He says that Logan can crawl back to his nest now that he paid his respects to Ichiro. While the funeral unfolds, Logan notices a weird tattoo on the wrist of a priest. As they are about to be exposed by him, one of these priests shoots him. Logan is stunned by the shot, which does not make much sense to him, as he should be able to recover more quickly. The Yakuza attacks, and they take Mariko away, 
while Logan is stunned every time he is shot. At the same time, a Yakuza member threatens Dr. Green, but she seduces him and poisons him by using her long tongue, which means she is a mutant as well. Logan is able to catch up with the gangsters that are trying to kidnap Mariko, and kills a few of them, but just outside the building, there are more gangsters waiting for him, and they beat him up with bats. An archer helps Logan, who takes a few seconds to recollect himself before running back after Mariko again. Logan is able to help her and takes her along, but the Yakuza members are still after them. Soon, the two of them manage to lose Yakuza, but Logan is bleeding, and he seems like he is suffering. At the train station, Mariko says she can find her way from here and walks on her own. However, Logan knows that she is not safe yet, and follows her on the train. Logan wants to know where Mariko was going, so she tells him that she is taking the train to the end of the line because she has a house in that area. Logan believes that is a terrible idea, but Mariko seems like she has made up her mind. But the one who is right is Logan, since he stumbles into more Mafia members when he goes to the bathroom. Although bullets hurt Logan, he cuts the side of the train open, and launches many Yakuza members out of it. Eventually, he and one of the gangsters end up on top of the train. Logan tries to get rid of him, but the man does his best to hold onto the top. Finally, Logan tricks him, and the man ends up bumping on a sign. Then, Logan gets rid of the last Mafia member, and takes Mariko to a love hotel to hide. Even at this hotel, Logan still sees visions of Jean, but he is interrupted by yet another attack. The Wolverine is beaten down pretty well this time, but Mariko saves him and gets him back inside. When Logan wakes up, he starts wondering what is going on with him. He has never felt this way in his life. He asks Mariko about Dr. Green, and she informs him that her grandfather met her in America and brought her to work for him. The next day, Mariko takes Logan to the house she was talking about, and reveals to him that Ichiro left the company's ownership to her. Logan assumes that her own father might be holding a grudge against her, and maybe he is involved with these Yakuza attacks. From what he has gathered, Mariko does not have the best of relationships with her father. One day later, Logan decides to mingle with the people of the village, and helps them with some work. When he sits to get some rest, he realizes that this place looks familiar. As he walks closer to a specific spot, he finds the hatch where he used to be imprisoned during the war. It was when he saved Ichiro that the man gave him his sword as a gift. Logan gave the sword back to Ichiro, and asked him to keep it safe for him as he would come to get it one day. Then, the two of them climbed back up to witness the destruction caused by the nuclear bomb. That day, Logan and Mariko connect with each other, and sleep together. Logan still dreams of Jean, and his claws come out. However, Mariko remains calm, and tells him a story of her grandfather. Then, she asks him about Jean, because she has heard him talk about her in his sleep. Logan shares the story with her, and Mariko seems to be very understanding. The next day, Logan wakes up. While the Mafia tries to kidnap Mariko again, he runs after them but he is only able to grab one guy, while Mariko is taken away in a car. Logan tortures the gangster, and finds his next lead. Yukio appears to help Logan, and he asks her to be taken to see Mori, a politician who is also Mariko's fiancé. Their engagement was set up by Ichiro according to Japanese tradition, as Logan enters his apartment, he finds Mori partying with two women. Logan asks him why he is trying to get Yakuza to kill Mariko. Mori, who happens to be the Minister of Defense of Japan, explains that Shinjin promised to make him super rich if he kills her. In the meantime, Mariko is taken to Shinjin, who is about to kill her. However, Dr. Green has sent a bunch of ninjas after him. After the archer saves Mariko, Green tells Shinjin that she needs his daughter alive. Then, he infuses a pen with Toxic, and sticks it in Shinjin's face. When Green and her ninjas are gone, Logan arrives there with Yukio, and decides to skin himself in order to see if there is anything that explains his weakness. Indeed, he sees that there is an electronic device attached to his heart. Apparently, the dream with Green was not a dream after all. Logan starts operating on himself to remove the device, but he is interrupted by Shinjin. Yukio tries to buy him some time while he keeps reaching for the device. Eventually, Logan takes it out, and his heart stops. But then he recovers and gets back up. Now, Shinjin has to defend himself against Logan, and he does a pretty good job. But no matter what, he can't win, and ends up dying. Right next, Logan intends to save Mariko, but the ninjas get on his way. Despite this, Logan has an advantage because they believe he is still weak. They have no idea he has removed the chip from his heart. 
As the fight unfolds, the ninjas realize that, and they call more of their friends. Yukio joins the fight in a big machine, and smashes some ninjas under it. The archer realizes that Logan can't be stopped, so he dips some arrows in a poison that Dr. Green gave him. When Logan is done with some of the ninjas, he starts running in order to find Yukio, but the ninjas use their poisoned arrows to stop him. They know Logan will not be killed, but maybe they can render him unconscious for a while. When Logan wakes up, he is tied up in a lab. Green walks into the room and presents him to a samurai armor which she calls the Silver Samurai. She informs Logan that this suit is made of adamantium. Then, Green challenges him to unleash his claws. Once he does, she traps them in that position. As the Silver Samurai activates, Mariko tricks the archer into stealing his knife and trying to help Logan. The Silver Samurai uses an energized sword trying to cut Logan's claws, but Mariko appears just in time and frees him. The Silver Samurai goes after Logan, and they start fighting. Logan tries to defend himself but the Samurai uses the huge energized sword to cut his claws. Green appears as well, and she helps the Samurai, but Yukio appears behind her and it is time for them to fight as well. Meanwhile, the samurai pins Logan down and is about to finish him, but the archer appears to save him, because he believes this is not the honorable way to do it. Unfortunately, the samurai kills him. Logan uses that opportunity to grab the energized sword and cut the head of the silver samurai. However, the samurai is still alive and pushes Logan to a cliff. As Logan is hanging there, the samurai grabs him and connects its pathways to Logan's claw's essence. Suddenly, Ichiro appears under the suit and tells Logan that he is naive to believe that he would die so easily. As he is absorbing Logan's DNA out of him, the Wolverine is getting older, while Ichiro is getting younger. Mariko witnesses this scene and grabs two of Logan's claws, using them to impale her grandfather's head. Logan has the time to recover, and now his bone claws grow out of his hand. He uses them to almost finish Ichiro off, before pushing him down the cliff and putting an end to this fight. Now, he is free to greet Mariko goodbye and continue with his life as he pleases. In the year 2029, Logan seems a bit older. He works as a limo driver when he wakes up hearing some noises. When he checks, he sees a bunch of thieves trying to steal the wheels from the limo. Logan wants to stop them, but they shoot him and send him to the ground. Logan gets back up, but the thieves give him a hard time. In any case, Logan is sick of it and gets mad. He uses his claws to kill some of those guys, while the rest of them drive away in a van. Logan is not the man he used to be. This year is very special because mutants have stopped being born. The mutants that already exist in the world have started losing their abilities. Nowadays, Logan tries to make a living like a normal person, even though he is not used to it. One day, Logan is approached by a woman, while he follows his usual routine. The woman asks him for help but Logan does not want anything to do with her. But at the same time, Logan is being followed by a guy who looks like he has a steel hand. Soon, the man enters the limo and asks Logan if a woman named Gabriella approached him. The man, Pierce, is not interested in Wolverine, but he wants to get to that woman because she took something that belongs to him. Logan's hunch tells him that things are going to get messed up pretty quickly, so he goes to check on his friends. His friends are Xavier and another mutant named Caliban, but that is not the sole purpose of his visit. As it appears, Logan buys some medication and brings them to Charles Xavier. Charles's mind is not what it used to be, and sometimes he has to be sedated. If his mind is unleashed, he might kill people and mutants. As Logan tries to give him a shot, Charles has a seizure that causes him to hurt all those around him. Logan is able to withstand the pain and manages to give him the shot before it is too late. Sometimes Charles remembers his friends, but other times he can't recognize who they are. Xavier talks to Logan about some evil forces that are trying to hurt the mutants, but Logan is happy they do not get involved in crazy missions anymore. On the other hand, Charles is worried because there are still a few young mutants left. It would be nice if they had somebody experienced to guide them through the world. After their conversation, Logan tries to pull his claws out, but one of them gets stuck, and he has to pull it out using his other hand. His hand is cut, and for the first time in his life, Logan has to wrap it up in order for it to heal. The next day, Caliban wants to have a talk with Logan, because he has no idea what they are going to do. He has also found an adamantium bullet in Logan's pocket, which implies that he might want to end himself. After his workday, Logan intends to find Gabriella, but she is not the only person he finds. Along with her, he finds Laura, a young girl, 
who lives with Gabriella, Logan is reluctant to help them because he knows he will be put in trouble for this. However, Gabriella can pay him $60,000 if Logan drives them to a location Gabriella wants to go. Logan is tempted, because he can use that money to carry out his plan for himself and his friends. He wants to buy a boat for them, and leave the country, in fact, he wants them to go live in the ocean, that way, Charles will be away from people and mutants, thus being unable to hurt them with his seizures. When Logan returns to take Gabriella and Laura the next day, he finds the woman dead in her room. He takes her phone before the police get there, and returns back to the yard he lives in. As Caliban greets him, he notices that there is some stuff hidden in the car. Caliban asks him about that stuff, but their conversation is interrupted by Pierce. The young man starts talking, and jokes with Logan about Charles. The military considers his mind a weapon of mass destruction now. Then, Pierce asks about the girl, but Logan tells him he has no idea what he is talking about. As Pierce starts talking, a steel pipe launches on his head, and knocks him out. Laura appears behind him, and Charles joins them as well. Although Logan is not welcoming the girl, Charles calms the girl down, and invites her in. Inside the facility, Charles communicates with the girl by reading her mind, and speaking back to her. At the same time, Caliban tries to get rid of Pierce, but he wakes up. While reinforcements are arriving, Logan sees that through the cameras, he rushes to put Charles in the car. Charles tells him that they need to take Laura with them, but Logan believes that she is not their problem. While he tries to drive away, Pierce's men block his way, and force him to drive back toward the yard. There, Logan tries to resist, but he is pinned down by these agents. Pierce wants to know about the girl, but Logan claims she is not here. In any case, Pierce knows he is lying and knocks him out. Then, he sends his men inside to find the girl. The men find the girl, but they are taking too long to walk back outside with her. Pierce is able to hear his men scream, and then sees Laura walking outside, holding the head of one of the soldiers in her hands. The girl pulls her claws out of her knuckles, and Logan realizes that this girl is special. She attacks a few more soldiers, and then runs away around the yard. The agents eventually find her, but Logan now joins the fight, and helps her out. Logan runs back to the car to make sure Charles is okay. Then, he drives the car near Laura so she can jump inside. Laura is very much like Logan, and she can even heal super fast. Logan's car is blocked again while he tries to escape, and he is forced to drive in reverse, as his enemies are approaching in their jeeps. Eventually, Logan is able to make it out of the junkyard, as he notices a train coming. That gives him an idea. He hits the gas pedal, while he has Pierce and his men on his back. At the right time, he crosses the railway, and blocks his enemies behind the train. As they drive away, Logan asks the girl who she is, but Charles believes Logan already knows the answer to that. The girl has the exact powers as him. Later, Logan takes a look over Gabriella's phone, and sees a video that is very private. In the video, Gabriella talks about a company named Transigen, that is operating in the USA and Canada officially, but unofficially, they have locations in places that nobody knows about. Gabriella used to work in one of those places, but she did not like what she was seeing. As she figured out, that facility was producing mutants with special abilities in order to use them as soldiers. When Gabriella's phone runs out of battery, Logan asks him what this girl is. Charles replies to him that Laura is his daughter, she has the same genetic code as him. While Logan takes Charles to the bathroom, Gabriella enters a store to snack on some chips and buy some glasses. The clerk tells her that she has to pay for that, but Laura flips him on the air and shows him her claws. Thankfully, Logan stops her and teaches her that what she is doing is not okay. After buying a charger, Logan switches Gabriella's phone back up and watches the rest of the video. Gabriella continues her narration by saying that one day she and the rest of the nurses and doctors in the facility were ordered to terminate the children. Some of the nurses tried to help those children and guide them to a place called Eden. As they had heard, that place was where mutants could live together. They managed to save some of the children, but the nurses were being hunted down for what they did. Gabriella states that if somebody is watching this video, it probably means that she is dead. Right next, Logan takes Laura and Charles to a hotel, so they can rest for a couple of hours. He takes a look at her lab papers found in her bag, and realizes that she has been created by his DNA. The next day, Logan gets rid of the old limo to buy a new car. When he gets back to the hotel, 
he finds out that Pierce has caught up to them, and his men are looking for Laura. Then, everybody starts having a headache, as Charles is obviously having another seizure. Logan makes his way back to the room, killing all the soldiers aiming at Charles, and then gives him a shot to end his seizure. While on the road, Logan almost has an accident, and the same happens to another family. The family of farmers almost lose their horses, but Charles uses his mind to calm them down and bring it back to them. The farmers want to help them for their help and invite them to dinner. Laura starts eating like there is no tomorrow. This family helps the mutants connect to each other. Logan even introduces Charles as the principal of an old school. After the meal, the farmers have some trouble with their water supply, and Logan helps the father, Will, to check it out. Will explains to him that all the fields have been bought by a big corporation that produces crops but he refused to sell his. Now the company is giving him trouble, because they want him to sell his land. As the two of them try to fix the water, a bunch of bullies approach them. As the bully points his gun, Logan snatches it away in a second. Logan takes care of them. Back in the house, a clone of Logan kills Charles, along with the rest of Will's family in order to abduct Laura. Logan sees the clone as he enters the house but he wants to check up on Charles first. Logan takes him to the pickup truck, but Charles dies, as he utters that their boat should be named Sunseeker. While chaos ensues as the clone loses control, Caliban grabs two grenades and launches them into the vehicle where he is being held. Logan is being beaten up by the clone, but Will helps him and hits the clone with his truck. After shooting the clone, Will wants to shoot Logan as well, but he is out of bullets. Finally, he collapses on the ground. Eventually, Logan takes Laura and drives away with her. In the aftermath of the battle, Logan buries Charles near a lake because he used to like water. Later, Logan and Laura continue on their way, but the Wolverine is way too tired. Laura reveals that Charles told her Logan wants to die and prompted her to not let him. Since Logan is tired, Laura convinces him to get some sleep. After a few hours, Laura jumps into the driver's seat and drives the car toward their desired destination, Eden. When Logan wakes up, he realizes that Laura has brought him to a place. She signals him to follow her, but Logan passes out again. As he slightly recovers, he realizes that a bunch of kids are pulling him up using a mechanism. This place named Eden is real. The kids try to help Logan by giving him a serum they have stolen from the lab but the Wolverine tells them that it can also make you crazy. Logan wakes up again after two days, and one of the oldest mutants among the young ones informs him that the kids are leaving tomorrow. The plan is to cross the border. As far as this kid knows, they have been granted asylum across the border. That night, Laura seems to be angry, and Logan asks her about it. Laura would want Logan to go with them, but the Wolverine believes that all the people he cares about end up dead. Laura will be safer being with the kids, and the kids will be safer if Logan does not go with them. However, this is not necessarily true. As Logan wakes up the next morning, the kids are gone, but a bunch of drones are after them as well. Logan grabs the serum the kids have left for him and runs after them immediately. At the same time, the mastermind evil behind all this, Dr. Rice, is after the kids through the woods. Logan tries to catch up with them, but he is too tired. Since he has to act fast, Logan uses the serum on himself. Despite this, there is no possible way Logan can get to them in time, so the kids have to use their powers in order to stay alive. As Laura saves one of her friends, she hears Logan yelling through the forest. Rice's men try to stop him, but Logan kills a few of them, even after receiving several shots. Soon, Laura is surrounded back, she gets her hopes back up. When she sees Logan running toward them, Logan tells his daughter to get behind him and starts slashing his opponents. His daughter joins him, and they manage to buy themselves some time. Laura notices that Logan took all the medicine, but it is wearing off. Some of the kids are taken, so Logan tries to distract the soldiers, while Laura sneaks up behind them. Dr. Rice appears to have a talk with Logan, and tells him that he is the son of Stryker, the man who infused Logan with adamantium. Rice is responsible for wiping out the mutants. He has been growing special crops to feed the world. Crops that contain substances which can minimize the powers of the mutants. Logan kills Dr. Rice on the spot, as Laura frees some of her friends. Chaos breaks loose, as the clone attacks as well. Logan is overpowered by the clone, but that gets Laura angry, and she helps her father. At the same time, some of the kids kill Pierce. The clone fights back, but now another kid helps Logan by launching a big vehicle on the clone. But even that is not enough. The clone gets back up and drags an injured Logan away. 
But then, Laura grabs Logan's gun and kills the clone by shooting him with the adamantium bullet. Laura tries to help her father, but it is time for Logan to go. While he is gradually dying, he calls Laura's name, and the girl calls him father. Laura cries over her father's dead body, as the rest of the kids gather around them. After Laura says a few words for her father's soul, it is time for the kids to go. Before Laura does, she turns the cross on the grave slightly to look like an X, honoring her father as the last of the X-Men. 